Hello and welcome to the Jogger Sew Along. This week we're sewing the Green Style Brazzy and Iron Joggers and I'm excited that you've chosen to sew with me. Today is day one and for day one um, we are printing our pattern, we're picking out our fabric, and we're cutting out our fabric. Um, so today does require a lot um, just because if you're short like me, you're going to need to make adjustments to your pattern. Um, or if you're tall, taller than the pattern drafts for. There is a 30 inch inseam cut line as well as a 32 inch inseam. So I'm a 27 inch inseam. So that means I'm, re I'm removing length from it. I'll be showing you in this video how exactly to do that um, as well as grading. So if your thighs are bigger or smaller than the pattern drafts for or your calves are, then you're going to want to adjust so that you have the room to fit them. Um, so I'll also be talking about that. Um, the pattern has been updated with finished measurements. So finished measurements are different than necessarily what size you want to make. They're just giving you an idea of what that um, what that part of the pattern looks like whenever you have finished sewing it. So that means that like let's say your um, thigh, let's say it's 20 inches and the finish measurement is 18 inches, well you know you're going to need more room than that because this is a pattern that doesn't have negative ease. So I, I don't try and grade too much but I do have to go up for my my calves because they are smaller than what the pattern finishes at. Or, I'm sorry, they're bigger than what the pattern finishes at. So I'll show you that, how to adjust for anywhere that you need to adjust on the pattern, as well as adjust for height. Okay, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the difference in the pattern. So if you're still trying to decide which one that you even want to sew, um, then maybe this will help you decide. So the iron joggers were drafted for the male body in mind. So that means they are more straight and narrow. Um, while the brassy joggers are drafted more to a curvier, a feminine body shape. So like if I wanted to sew the iron joggers for me, I'm gonna be doing some major um, grading for a smaller, more curvier hips. And I'm not gonna have the same kind of fit that I would get on the brassy joggers um, to show a more feminine shape. Um, since my waist is smaller than my hips. While in a man, it is more of a straight and sometimes more of this. Like with my husband, I used the, a bigger waistband than I did for his hips. While on me, I'm using a smaller waistband than I would for my hips. Um, the, another difference is the, the pockets. The, um, the iron joggers have a back zippered pocket option as well as their front pocket is, you both can do zipper pockets on the front on either pattern, but the um, you have a, either a scoop or a slant. It's just a slight difference in the two jogger patterns. Um, on both of them, you have multiple end seams that you can choose from, from shorts to long shorts to capris to um, a cuff at the bottom or a hem at the bottom, just depending on the fabric and the style that you're going for. So let's also talk about fabric. That's a huge part on joggers. I feel like joggers are my favorite, 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 favorite thing to wear because they're like secret pajamas. But here's the thing, you can go out in public and you look put together, at least in my opinion, I look put together, but you won't if you don't pick the right fabric. Um, there are There is a level of your joggers looking like sweatpants that, um, that are not as, um, is appropriate for wearing out. And I think the big thing, the thing that really makes a difference is your fabric. And if your fabric does not have good recovery, then the bottom, your butt is gonna get saggy. And if you have like sagginess back there, then it just looks kind of frumpy. But if your fabric has really good recovery, then it's not gonna do that. And you're going to stay looking put together, even though they may feel like pajamas. That and the finishing, adding pockets, adding waistband, you know, adding all these touches really makes a difference. And styling, I think a pair of heels or flats instantly changes the same pair of pants into something that looks awesome to wear out. Um, while using sneakers or loafers shows that you're more casual, ready to work out. Um, speaking of working out, I work out in joggers. Um, if your waistband is tight enough, they're gonna stay nice and secure. And if you've used athletic fabric that breathes well, then you're gonna feel good working out in them. Um, another thing to note on fabric, okay, so you're thinking athletic fabrics. I love the brushed athletic that Green Style stocks. It has wonderful recovery and feels really soft. Um, suplex, I used a suplex from the Styled Magnolia that was hard to cut into because it felt so good. Um, but it wasn't hard because I used joggers and it's one of my tried and true patterns. So I knew I was using a pattern that I was gonna love whenever I finished, but it's such a good fabric. Um, their suplex feels 
feels amazing, um, as well as their Athletic Brush Poly. The recovery on it, the spandex content's really high, and the recovery on it is wonderful, um, so that you're not going to have baggy pants at the end of the day, and that your waistband is going to stay up really well. I use their Athletic Brush Poly for one of my waistbands, and it, and it feels really good. Um, another fabric, French Terry's, um, sweatshirting fabrics. So there's French Terry's that have really good spandex content that I like to use, um, or there's some that don't, don't. And if you're using the ones that don't, then you're gonna need to know not to use that on your cuff. If the fabric you're using is really thick or doesn't have spandex, you'll wanna use um, a different fabric for the cuffs and waistband. You'll, you'll wanna use something that is lighter, that has really good recovery so that cuffs can keep their shape and so is your waistband. Um, another thing on the waistbands, um, let's talk about, like, so they're different. The Brazi waistband is meant to have enough negative ease to stay up on you without the need of elastic. While the Iron Joggers, you need two inch elastic. And, um, but it's exactly the same pattern piece. It's just that the Brazis have more negative ease, so it's a little bit not as wide. So if you feel that you're, you want that extra comfort, then you can definitely use the two inch elastic. Is what you'll wanna do is cut it one inch less than your waist, where you're not your natural waist, but where your pants are sitting. So you'll wanna measure exactly where your low waist is, where you're wearing your pants, subtract an inch, add it into your waistband. You'll overlap it three quarters of an inch and add it to your waistband. And you can also so do it the exact same way as the iron joggers. Um, another thing that I always do because fabrics can be so different in how they feel on is I always try on my waistband before I add it to the pants and then take out width if I need to beforehand. Because I've made the Brazzy joggers and Ponty and I did not need to make any changes to my waistband and they stay up wonderful. While I made them in double press poly and it did not have as much of recovery and firmness as the Ponty and I had to remove an inch or two from my waistband to keep my pants up. Um, okay, I hope I've covered everything you need to know on waistband. Oh, another thing, when you're picking your size, choose your hip measurement for your hip. And then for your waistband, choose your waist measurement um, and selecting your size. And let's see, okay, let's get started. Let's get into, um, after you've cut out your pattern and printed everything out, um, let's look um, at adjusting and making the adjustments we need. Um, so I'll pan you over to that. Now we are ready to adjust our pattern. If you have an inseam that is shorter than 30 inches, you are going to need to reduce your pattern to accommodate for your shorter legs. And if you have an inseam that is greater than that, then there's extra cut lines for that. Um, or if your inseam is even greater than the longest cut line on the pattern, then you will need to increase the length. So one place to start is to find the approximate knee length on the pattern and to measure. So the approximate knee length on the pattern is at, let's see, right around 13, between 13.75, almost 14. On the smallest size, it's at 13.75. On the extra small, it's at right at 14. So anyway, so you're going to want to measure and see where your knee falls. And this knee placement line is the middle of the knee. So if let's say like my knee starts at 12 inches and then ends at 14 or 15, well, I'm gonna pick the number in the middle of that and then have go with that. So is how I, reduce length is I figure out the difference between my knee placement in here and then I subtract that amount here, which may only be a half of an inch or an, or one inch. You're probably not gonna have like five inches all right here to subtract. It's going to just be part of the difference in your height. So you're gonna do that here at the length and shorten line and then the rest of that will be in your calf. So for me, I only need to take away 0.75 inches at my length and shorten line, and that leaves me two inches to take out of my calf. So in order to do that, I'm going to get a nice long ruler, and I'm gonna start by drawing my grain line. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with the grain line on the pattern, and I'm going to extend that grain line throughout my pattern. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to draw my green line. This really helps to make sure that you're keeping everything even. Okay, so there's my green line and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it at the length and shorten line. I'm going to line it up with that and then I'm also going to make sure that it's also lined up with that green line. 
kind of just a way to like double check. And as you can see, I printed three sizes and that's just for my ability to grade. Okay, so I'm gonna draw another line an inch away from that length and shorten line. You can go either above or below. It doesn't really matter as long as it's even. So I have two lines that are an, uh, an inch apart. I meant to do 0.75 apart. So I'm gonna redraw it, draw it, and wish I would have drawn it in pencil, but I'll just remember. Okay, so now is what I'm gonna do is I have my lines here, and then I'm going to look um, below my knee. I need to remove two inches between that and where that ankle cuff goes. And I don't wanna do two inches all at once. I'm gonna spread it out. So I'm gonna see that these are about 13 inches apart. So that means that I'm gonna go maybe, let's say four inches down and then another four inches down. So I'm just gonna kind of make them even underneath here. So it's not a lot of guesswork. It's just a matter of making sure that you're not making big chunk adjustments and that you remember the adjustments you're making. This is the front of the leg and that you remember to do the exact same to the back of the leg. So see, there's an inch I'm gonna take out there and then I'm gonna draw another line. That one's four inches below. And the same, and I drew those an inch apart. And the same thing goes, like see how I took two inches below my knee and, and 0.75 above my knee. And that's just because of um, this knee line is really showing you where your inseam lies. So you might have your shortness all in your thigh and none in your calf. And if that's the case, then you're going to, going to want to spread out. So you might want to do one at the length and shorten line and then one maybe three inches above it and another. So just make sure you spread them out and don't take more than about an inch and a half out of one given spot. And um, also notice how I didn't fully cut out my pattern because I like to do my shortening and then cut the pattern. Or I, do, or I do it in this order. I shorten and then I grade and then I cut out the pattern. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna get my not fabric scissors. I'm gonna get my paper cutting scissors and I am going to cut apart. And on here, I'm cutting at the top line. And you see, I would cut that apart and then I'm taking that line and I'm matching it to the bottom line. And whenever I match it, one thing that I'm going to do is you can, you can line up your length and shorten line, but I really look at the edges and I just try and make sure that it's overlapped evenly. So meaning I don't want to have, I'll show you a drastic example. You know, I don't want to do this. I don't want those lines far off. I want them as close as I can possibly get to being over an even amount. Now you can see where I have removed the length where I just cut across and I made the lines meet each other. And now I'm gonna do some grading. And the I printed off three sizes, even though I really only need two of them, but for some reason I like to have that smaller size just in case I ever wanna take any away from it. I can if I find an area not fitted enough. So is what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut this one for the cut line for the full length ankle leg cuff. And then I drew a line. So the size that I am is the middle one. And the size my calves are, are the larger one. And that's just knowing my body. My legs are not um, thin like my size would, would think that they should be, at least not in my calves. I think that's a petite problem um, or just a body shape thing, but I'm not typical. So I always know to grade for my calves. So I always draw a line starting since right at the ankle leg cuff and I'll draw it all around where the capri length is. And then I know my calves are ending closer between the capri and the knee. So I'm drawing it back in and blending it to my other size. And I just do that by trying to smoothly cut and it's maybe such a small difference, but it makes a difference in my fabric not getting caught on my calves. And then up here, I know my thighs are actually a little bit smaller, so I'm a little bit more of like a rectangle on my legs than I am an upside down triangle. So I grade from a larger size on my calves all the way into even, I go between the smallest size and the size that I am on my thighs, so I don't get too much baggy 
there. So you can watch me cut this out. I hope it's not confusing how I said that. Um, but when you're drawing the line, um, I can even show you how I draw the line because you can see how it's not exact um, right here because of where I removed the length. So I'm going to be just smoothly making that line. So you see how I just smooth, you just smoothly connect them is what you're doing. And I don't usually draw it. I just do it with my scissors and feel for it. And I cut away, I don't plan on making zipper pockets, so I cut that away. If you do plan on making zipper pockets, then you're going to, you can cut it away and then tape it back on to have for future reference. Okay, so I finished cutting out my pattern and I just wanna show you. So you wanna make sure you have this dog ear right here. And then um, I'm gonna show you my grading. So my hip is in the extra small. So I cut out that, but then my thighs, they I need to work in the gym on them a little bit more. So I actually cut in between the extra small and extra, extra small line because I am in between those sizes on my thighs. And then whenever I got down to my calf, I went all the way out to the small. So I went to a larger size and I just made sure my lines were nice and flush um, on my grading. And I did, and it was really actually kind of easy to do um, because I had already removed some of that length. So it made the lines actually a little bit smoother that I was doing. So my leg is less of an upside down triangle and more of a rectangle. And um, the pocket I'm gonna cut out is the one that corresponds to the hip that I did. And I'm gonna, and I wrote down all along the way where I did it, and I'm gonna keep this piece out and do the exact same thing to my back. Um, and one way to know if you think you're gonna need any in the calf is to go and measure your calf. Measure the thickest part of your calf and then um, compare it to the pattern. So you can measure where that is on your inseam and compare it to the pattern. And you wanna make sure you don't have negative ease there because if meaning if, is what I mean by negative ease is meaning that the pattern piece is smaller than your calf because the rest of it is not a fitted pattern. And if the ease is negative there, then your whole pants will kind of get caught there and you'll have all these like wrinkles on the back of your leg. And even if you have fabric with great spandex content, it'll look like you have saggy bottoms, which in joggers you don't want. You need a little bit of ease in your calf, but not too much ease because then they look more sloppy than they do look sexy. And you're going for a good looking pair of joggers. Okay, so now that I have this piece done, I'm gonna go do my back of my leg and then we can get started. The first thing we're gonna start on is pockets. And so stay tuned, pockets will be tomorrow.